Hi, everyone, and welcome to Uncovered Vintage Fashion Magazine Review. I'm Stephanie, and I've been collecting and selling vintage fashion magazines for over 20 years. And I'm Morley. I'm a former copywriter and am now an award-winning playwright and screenwriter. Together, we will examine some of your favorite vintage fashion magazines from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. On Uncovered, we'll discuss some of the magazine's models, layouts, and did I mention the models? And we'll also review some of the ads and articles that make these magazines such a great piece of pop culture history. So, fashion your seatbelts and let's get uncovered! Hi, and welcome to Uncovered Vintage Fashion Magazine Review Podcast, episode number 13. Today we're going to be reviewing British Vogue, October of 1978. So, Steph, as per the usual question, does 1978 ring a bell with you at all? You know, 1978 elementary school, not too much to talk about there. It was the month of October, so perhaps I was getting ready for Halloween. Or maybe some guy was putting some gum in your hair, possibly. That's very, very possible. (laughs) Never know. So what was going on in your life, Morley? Probably nothing. Again, 1978, uh, how old was I? I would have been approximately, well, actually, it's not true. This is October 1978, October of 1978. So I would have probably just had my bar mitzvah. That's exciting. Yeah, probably. Uh, No pictures uh, are are there, so uh, we have to take my word for it, my my, my memory of it. But yeah, so I would have had my bar mitzvah in September. October means that the Leafs, Toronto Maple Leafs, my beloved hockey team, would have started playing and started losing. And um, that's all I remember. I know, exactly. But let's talk about some of the uh, things that were going on uh, around at that time. Sounds good. All right, so let's talk about songs. Uh, One of the most popular songs in October of 1978 was Hot Child in the City. Ah, Nick Gilder. Nick Gilder. Now, what's interesting is that we are covering the British Vogue, right? Yes. Okay, well, Nick Gilder was born, I believe, in London, England, and moved to Vancouver, Canada, so it kind of covers the best of both worlds. Very appropriate. Absolutely. He was also the lead singer of a Canadian group uh, called Sweeney Todd, and they had a a big hit. Uh, I don't know if it was so big internationally, but a big hit with a song called Roxy Roller. And, of course, we have... uh, our sister-in-law and brother-in-law has a, a dog called Roxy. Roxy. So Stephanie often refers to her as Roxy Roller, the dog. Um, Sometimes I even sing it to her. That's right, Roxy Roller. And she runs away and leaves for a few hours. Do you want to give us a rendition right now? <laughs> no, thanks. Okay, we want to keep our listeners? <laughs> no, okay. thanks, exactly. An- another big song at the time was You Needed Me by Anne Murray, another uh, Canadian mm-hmm. uh, artist. Neighbor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Reminiscing by the Little River Band. Let's talk about some of the... Big films at the time. One of the top films was The Boys from Brazil. Very, very dark film. I haven't seen it, but I've heard great things about it. Uh, Going South, a nice comedy. And lastly, Halloween. The very first Halloween movie. Actually, it was, yes, it was the very first Halloween movie directed by John Carpenter. Did you ever see it? Yes, I have. And now Halloween was the one with Michael Myers, right? Yes. Okay, got it. So, um... Let's talk about Vogue UK, 1982. Okay, so let's get started. Right. So this is British Vogue. 1978, sorry. It's okay. This is British Vogue, October 1978. So Vogue UK. Our cover model is Janice Dickinson. Photographer is Mike Reinhardt. Hair by Carrie Warren. Makeup by Barbara Daly. And Janice is wearing fashion by... It's a black satin jacket by Adrian Cartmel for Mason. And jewelry by Kuczynski. So mostly all you can see is her jewelry, actually. She's wearing a beautiful pair of uh, stud earrings. Those, um, are, those are big studs, man. I they mean, are. They are. Like, they almost They're not take exactly up her... studs. They're just, no, I was going to yeah. say it takes up like a third of her ear. Yeah, I just meant as opposed to chandelier, they're not hanging. Or hoop earrings, yeah. Let's go ahead and read you the headlines from this cover. Okay. So it's Vogue Shine, New Ways to Dress at Night, 40-Page Guide to Fashion, Beauty, Jewelry, And Brian Inglis looks at faith healing. Which is very interesting. It is. And a lot of people do believe in faith healing. In fact, you know who I believe was uh, believed in faith healing was the late Andy Kaufman. Really? Now, for those of you who do do not remember Andy Kaufman, he really came to fame uh, as Letka on Taxi. Thank you very much. That's what he sounded like. (laughs) And he was suffering, I believe, from pancreatic cancer, if memory serves. And he, I believe, went to the Philippines to try this 
I wouldn't call it experimental treatment, but he met with a faith healer and, and unfortunately it didn't help and he passed away, but very sad. But that's what I think too about. Young. Way too young. Yeah, Going definitely uh, ahead of his time. So that's Vogue, British Vogue, October 1978. And let's get started. Yeah, let's get uncovered. Yep. So the first section that we're going to talk about starts on page 185 and it's entitled Shines of the Times. It's a section called Vogue's Eye View. Oh, they're so funny. The UK Vogue shines the times and the signs of the times are so I cheeky. Like, I thought you were like that. So, okay. so cheeky. Oh, yeah. So our models are Yasmin Gunesia and Carrie Nygren. Photography by Lothar Schmidt. Hair by Carrie Warren. The makeup is uncredited. This is possibly because the models did their own. I'm not well, maybe sure. Maybe I did it. I was a uh, savant at 13. I didn't want to tell anyone. Oh, so were you available that I, day? Well, actually, after my Marbitzwa, yes. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and read the caption. This time it's nighttime and it's vital to shine. If you feel good about yourself, it will show. So let your spirits shine and your hair, skin, eyes, lips, teeth, nails, your satin and your jewels, your belt, even the heels of your evening sandals. That is how it is now. Great. And so, thank you for Hooked on Phonics. That really worked out well all those months you it took. It sounded more like Dr. Seuss. I actually felt like I was reading a Dr. A Seuss book. A little bit, yeah, yeah. I can see why. <laughs> um, so, this is 17 pages in total. It's a two-page description and photos of what is in style. But as you can as you can gather from what I just read, it's shine, shine, shine all the way. Fabrics such as silk and satin, jewel tones, aquamarine, garnet, ruby, emerald, or metal tones, bronze, platinum, gold, dinner suits or dinner pajamas under jackets. <sighs> dinner pajamas. Yeah, I always love that. Okay. Jewelry, real or magnificently fake, and I'm quoting them and saying magnificently fake. Wow. Glitter in Unexpected places, such as shoes, tights, or stockings. Now, glitter in unexpected places these days, it would be totally different than shoes, tights, or stockings. Let me tell you right now. Yeah. Fur worn, day or night. Right. So, turning the pages, it's just basically a party scene with these two models. We're talking balloons, and here's a mask, like a masquerade yeah, type Yeah, looks like she had a masquerade ball. Yeah. And beautiful photos. Uh, and who, who's models the model are in again? action. I see confetti here. Who's the model on the previous one is, page? It's Yasmin Gunesia. So I'm assuming she is the more exotic one. She looks like a cross between Marlena Dietrich and maybe Rita Hayworth. Oh, she's very beautiful. Yeah, so she sort of has that exotic look to her. So very pretty. Yeah, yeah. And the other model, of course, Carrie Nigren. Right. So a, a blonde. Mm hmm. Um, gorgeous, lots of jewelry, diamonds, big, satin, shine big, is the thing. But big ostentatious jewelry too. It is. So we're looking at one particular photo, for example, and she's wearing a necklace. And this necklace, I don't know what you call that, but the pendant itself is humongous. And on her wrist. A matching bracelet. A matching bracelet. And again, it, it looks like, you know, Wonder Woman type of bracelets. It's like, that's how huge it is. Yeah. Very good observation. And they're calling it a waistcoat with diamond trapezoids. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. Great. Um, yeah, it's all about the shine. Even the makeup is shiny. They're well, wearing lipstick glossy too. The, lips. Yeah, I was going to say the lipstick yeah. is very glossy as yeah. well. And just as an aside, the article makes mention of a place called Stobo Castle. Now, we are now in a pandemic, as we all well know. Of course. And we're all aching to go on vacation. So just wanted to let you know that Stobo Castle is actually a 19th century house a 19th century house in Scotland that has been revamped as a spa and it's still in operation, by the way. So just so everyone's aware, a spa day starts at 99 pounds. I did Google it. Okay. So just FYI uh, for your just, next vacation. Wow. And just remember, if it's not Scottish, it's crap. So <laughs> continue on. And, you know, that's about it. Some of the fashion in this in this layout is by... Jeffrey Bean, Christian Dior, and Critzia. So, gorgeous layout. Yeah, it's really pretty. Lots of shine. That's about it for this one. Yeah, and I see a lot of reverse print as well. So, if you're going to try to read anything on these pages... Wear your reading glasses. Oh, man, that Big is time. difficult to read. Wow. It is. Okay, great. Thanks. So, on pages 14 and 15, there's an ad for Liberty and Company Limited. So what Liberty and Company are, they're, uh, I guess, a wool manufacturer. So if someone wants to uh, make a pattern, if you will, then they would probably use Liberty and Company's uh, wool. 
So it's, uh, again, it's a double page ad. And uh, Steph, you're much better at describing things than I am. How would you describe this particular interesting ad? So it's done in sepia. In, in the, it looks like a family portrait in the family's home. It's men and women. Most of the women are wearing floral garments, frocks. floral dresses, <laughs> frocks. The men um, are standing up. You know, it's like this photographer said, I am now going to take the creepiest family photo you have ever seen. Yeah, exactly. Say cheese. Yeah, I mean, this is a family portrait just like, you know, I don't know. It looks like more like the Adams family. Um, you have the women dressed in these dresses, for lack of a better word. It looks like they're from the 1800s. And um, one of the, there's two men, I think, or three men dressed with ties or whatever. It's just a weird looking photo. And then, again, to top it off, it I don't know if it's, well, it's definitely a sepia tone. Yeah. But I think the photographer also smeared some Vaseline on the lens as well to it's give it kind of, of like a, a yeah slightly blurry look. And then what's interesting too is in the bottom uh, left on the right on the right page, you have the uh, uh, family outline. So you know in the Sgt. Pepper's album, uh, you have all these figures. And then uh, on the inside of it, it has the exact same uh, shape, if you will, the outline of all these characters, and they're numbered. So you can tell, okay, number one, that's Diana Doors, and number two is so-and-so, three is, is Dan Laurel. Um, here, so they're making reference to Vogue patterns. Right. So each of the um, garments that they're wearing is a Vogue pattern, so they're numbering the Vogue patterns Yeah. in case you wanted to buy these to wear them for yourself. And make them yourself. And in mm -hmm. fact, it says at Liberty's, everything clicks in pure new wool. There are soft tweed jackets, Yves Saint Laurent suits, and pure wool sweaters for men. There are soft and pretty dresses in Liberty's fine Varuna wool. Or you can buy Liberty print Varuna wool by the meter. It's interesting as well, by the meter, because of course, um, the UK has been using metric for a long time. If this were a regular Vogue, it would have said uh, you can purchase wool by uh, the foot, probably, or by the yard. Anyway, just a really interesting, weird ad. And um, yeah, I would uh, I just want to bring everyone's attention to it. So page 202 brings us to a two-page black and white feature entitled Hair. I'm going to read the caption. Hair, putting on the shine, latest looks, care, cut, natural treatments, massage, rinses. So this is a short little feature, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. The models are Tina Chow and others that I couldn't identify. Hair by Leonard, Hugh, and Alan. Makeup is uncredited. Now, Tina Chow's hair is on the right-hand side. It's a short little pixie cut, and it's done by Leonard. Leonard is a British hairdresser that was known for creating the pixie haircut that launched the career of British model Twiggy in the 60s. So he's a very, very prolific hairdresser himself. Sure, yeah. Okay? And Tina Chow, she was an American model and jewelry designer. She was married to Michael Chow, the owner of Mr. Chow restaurant chain. Huh. Her sister, Adele Lutz, was married to David Byrne of the Talking Heads. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Unfortunately, Tina died of AIDS in 1992. Uh, she was only 41 years uh, old. It's terrible. So here she is. Um, she's at the height of her career. She's... Um, she looks very elegant. She looks very, very elegant. I notice as well that the, uh, the makeup is very, very like white. It's very pale. It is. And I, I'm wondering if that was done to accentuate the darkness of the hair, possibly. Could be. And again, uh, you know, they're focusing on shine. Right. The lipstick is very shiny as well, I noticed. And if you look at the different models as well, their hair, I mean, you almost need sunglasses when you look at it. But look at this updo. So they've got a really yeah. different updo. And I know this is 1978 and it's a long time ago, but by today's standards, it's so strange. But it's this almost looks, like, looks a, like Princess Leia almost. It does look. It's sort of like a donut. It's sort of like an upturned mm, donut donuts. shape. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how yeah. to describe it. No, it's it's very... I, I wouldn't know how to describe that. I'm sure it was very much in style. Yeah, probably. But it, it does remind me a little bit of Princess Leia. Yeah. Possibly. And the makeup, uh, Use again... Use the comb, Luke. <laughs> and go ahead. The makeup, again, is uncredited. Um, I don't think I mentioned who took the photo. Actually, I did not. It was John Swinnell. And what's okay. interesting, too, is that if you look at some of the pictures, I mean, there's a model in the bottom left-hand corner. She almost looks like a silent film actress. You're right. Because there's so much, like, white, uh, I guess, pancake makeup. I'm not sure. But it just looks like it's she's so pale. And it's really all you see is her hair, basically. And I think that was done purposely, so you're really focusing on, on the, the hair. hair. Yeah. yeah. That makes yeah. sense. In addition, they also did 
black and white, which even, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so it focus. makes sense. So, yeah, so that's hair. That's an interesting page 202. Uh, yeah, and again, this you'll never know what you find in these magazines, and just yeah, it's really interesting. I, I like this. I'm glad you pointed this one out. Thank you. So, on pages 20 and 21, again, there's a double page ad. It's for LBO Martin Fisher. And the best way to describe this ad is the top portion of the ad, you see a bunch of uh, ladies' legs in figure skates, and they're wearing leggings. That's what you call them? Uh, tights. Tights. Yeah. And then underneath, uh, you don't see the top part. All you see are basically from the... Uh, from the hip down. Hip down, yep. And on the left-hand side of the page, on the bottom part, it says there's more than one way to cut a figure on the ice. So what they're basically talking about, again, is they're talking about tights and stockings that you can buy. Uh, but what I found very interesting about this is this. So, number one, um, you know, the UK is known for a lot of things, England. Uh, figure skating is not one of them, really. Uh, in terms of Olympic events, they've won the most medals, I believe, at uh, cycling, uh, rowing, uh, track and field, I believe, and some others. Uh, I don't know of any world-class uh, figure skaters uh, in England. So I just found it very interesting of all the things to show. I mean, I guess there it's an interesting way of showing leggings and it catches your eye. Uh, but I just thought that was uh, very unusual. But a clever ad, there's more than one way to cut a figure on the ice, as opposed to, you know, the figure eights they usually talk about. So it's a good ad, uh, but just something I would never associate with England. So five of the photos, the model is skating. Right. Okay. And the last one, she's on her back with the skates pointing up. So yeah. the inference is that she's fallen. Right. So I thought it was very cute, very clever, very eye-catching. And also for the company LBO, I would think this is very economical because all they really need is one model to change into different stockings six times. Yeah. And they don't need a brand name model. They just need someone with nice legs. Yeah, but, it looks, but it looks like if you're looking at the legs, it looks like there's different models because if you look at the second picture, her legs are thicker than some of the other ones. So, oh, that could be, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think they probably use different models for whatever reason, maybe to save on time. I don't know. Could be. But interesting ad. And uh, if you see this magazine, look for it. Very eye-catching. It is. So page 206 brings us to the undressed evening. It's a six-page layout, black and white. Model is Nancy Donahue. Photography by Dick Balerian. Makeup is uncredited. Hair is Sam and Carrie at Molten Brown. Carrie is Carrie Warren and Sam McKnight. And I did verify this with Carrie Warren on Instagram. So thank you, Carrie, for your help. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. So I'm going to go ahead and read the caption as usual. Padded jacket, slim leather trousers, a silk suit with straight, straight skirt. Okay. I think they could have added in another straight. <laughs> it's like it's a mad, 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 mad. It's a straight, straight, <laughs> straight, straight skirt. Okay. Honestly. Go ahead. So these are black and white photos. It's evening wear, mainly suits. Leather and silk, diamond jewelry, lapel pins, wide shoulder jackets, mm -hmm. starting to come in. Yeah. Slim trousers, long straight skirts. Fashion is by Victor Herbert, Nigel Preston, Fruit of the Loom, okay. and War. Right. Okay. And I just want to talk a little bit about Nancy Donahue. Let's. I just want to talk a little bit about Nancy Donahue. So Nancy's a top American model and actress from Massachusetts. She's a cool blonde with looks raging from innocent to sophisticated. Her covers have included Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and Mademoiselle. Mm -hmm. I have personally owned several of her Mademoiselle covers, and they are truly some of my favorites. So now Nancy is an award-winning pastry chef and certified fitness trainer slash registered yoga trainer. Wow. I mean, so she, she'd have to keep in shape to be yeah. so slim after making all those amazing desserts, I bet. Honestly. But yeah. fitness is obviously a huge part of her life. Yes. And she's since relaunched her career as a classic model. Oh. Here she is beautiful, blonde, elegant as always, statuesque. Mm -hmm. The clothing is beautiful. She always brings it. Nancy Donahue. Gorgeous layout. Yeah. Really nice layout. You know, look at see. some of these poses. She really looks confident. Mm hmm Yeah, her body language speaks volumes. Yeah. And she is that girl next... She can. She has a big range. She can be that girl next door, or she can look elegant, as she does here. Right. So that's always an asset to a model, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So okay. that's the undressed evening. Thanks. So I want to bring everyone's attention to an ad on page 109. It's the bottom part of the page, and it's for a product called... 
brand slim brand tablets and this is just around the time when everyone heard how good brand is for you and it kind of helps you go so it's a, there's a before and after picture uh, and uh, what's interesting too is that on the inside you have this heavier woman and of course on the uh, beside her is how much she's lost so uh, it's showing her weight as 10 stone four pounds versus eight stone four pounds so I believe that a stone, I think, is around 20 pounds. So if this is true, then the inside she would have weighed 204 pounds, and the other one's 164, unless I'm completely wrong. Oh, no. She, there's no way she weighs 200 pounds. As a matter of fact, in the before picture, to me, she doesn't even look that overweight. No, true, true. But anyway, I, I could be wrong. She doesn't look overweight at all. But she says here on the caption is, I lost 28 pounds in eight weeks with the brand slim diet. Now I feel younger, feel years younger and I look great. And um, again, this is just one of those hype things where you hear about brands like, oh, brand. It's sort of like the... Uh, um, What's the other one you hear about? The ketones. Or mm. you hear about the apple cider vinegar. It's always the latest, greatest fat. Take one pill and you'll lose weight. It kind of reminds me of a, a story with my mother years ago. So I don't think I ever told you this story. So many years ago, my mother, uh, I guess, was trying to lose some weight. And she called me. And she was excited. She says, guess what, more? I said, what? She said, I lost, uh, I lost seven pounds. I said, that's great. Seven pounds of what? <laughs> and she says, what do you mean? I said, well, did you lose seven pounds of water? Did you lose seven pounds of muscle? Seven pounds of... Click. Oh, you rained on her parade. I know, but it was like... <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she had a bowel movement. I don't know, but... Oh, the point, oh Morley. <laughs> but the point is... Oh, Rob. But the point is, though... I didn't is, say Rob. I know. But the point is, though, is that when someone tells me they lost seven pounds or three pounds, it's like, great. You know, it's just one of those things. But right now, we're seeing in 1978, uh, in this particular case, it was an ad for Bran. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. There was a fad for a while. And yes, brand is fantastic for your colon. But again, you can't take a pill or two That's, and expect and to lose your weight. Your point is a good one that all, yeah. weight is, all weight is not equal. That's right. Exactly. Right. So, you know, if, you, if you're going to fast, then you're going to definitely lose muscle. And whereas if you work out and you eat properly, you will lose fat. Rant is over. Thank you. Page 212 brings us to a layout entitled Star Furs. This is a 12-page black and white and color layout. And the caption is Star Furs and Supporting Cast, Swakara Coyote, understudied by silk trousers and waistcoat, baggy leathers, and cashmere. So our models are Janice Dickinson and Debbie Dickinson. Any relation? Sisters Janice Dickinson and Debbie Dickinson. Photography by Mike Reinhardt. Hair by Carrie Warren, and makeup is uncredited. So we have the sisters, Janice and Debbie Dickinson. They have contrasting looks, Janice being very dark and Debbie being sort of your blonde-haired girl next door. Debbie Dickinson was introduced to modeling by her sister, Janice. They're originally from Hollywood, Florida. Debbie is the youngest sister. There is another Dickinson sister and had followed her, followed Janice's steps as a model. So this particular layout uh, is the models are wearing fur coats ranging from mid-thigh to mid-calf in black, white, and beige. And I did just want to describe this first photo because Janice is wearing a black men's coyote smoking jacket by Swakara. It's tuxedo style. And I just wanted to point out the fact that Janice can rock anything. I mean, this is a men's jacket, a right. men's smoking jacket. And okay. she looks fantastic. And I also wanted to mention a little bit about the hairstylist, Carrie Warren. Now, he also did the hair on the cover. And he's Australian. He arrived in London in the early 1970s. Carrie's first Vogue cover was in 1972, but he has since worked on over 200. Unbelievable. Warren has worked both on print and in film. Some of his movies have included Cold Mountain, Mission Impossible 2, The Great Gatsby, and Carrie actually works a lot with Nicole Kidman. And I'm going to quote Nicole Kidman. She has called him, quote, the best hairdresser in the world. That's so impressive. So that is very high praise from yeah. Nicole Kidman. Other celebrities that Carrie Warren has worked with include Kate Blanchett, Christy Turlington, Adele, countless others. Right. This is only a half hour show. Uh, the list goes on and on. So that's Carrie Warren, fantastic hairstylist. Well, it's quite the resume, and I would say as a resume, as long as your arms and legs put together. Perhaps. Yes. 
arms, legs, torso, yeah. <laughs> other people. Sounds like murder scene. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You started Anyhow, this. Go ahead. Moving on. So, yeah. So that's Star Furs, page 212. Okay. So on page 104, there is a feature article, and it says Miss Marianne Moore and Muhammad Ali. So for those of you who are not familiar, Miss Marianne Moore was a world-famous poet. She uh, passed away in 72. And Muhammad Ali, of course, was considered by many to be the greatest uh, fighter in the world, heavyweight fighter. And um, this is an excerpt they're showing from a, a book by the author George Plimpton. It's his new book called Shadow Box, where he recollects famous encounters with celebrities. So what I want to focus on, actually, is George Plimpton. So George Plimpton uh, was a very unique author because what he would actually do is he would actually uh, participate in certain sports. So, for example, uh, at one point, he uh, he played, I think, a quarter uh, of a game for the Detroit uh, Lions and really? the football team. He also played an exhibition game, I think, one period for the Boston Bruins where he played a goalie. Uh, he fought around with fighters. So what he would do is he would participate in these sports against the pros. And uh, in fact, he wrote a book, I believe, about his uh, experience uh, working out with the uh, Detroit Lions. And the book was called Paper Tiger. Really? Yeah. So uh, he has a very, very interesting and storied career. Uh, he, he did a lot of commercials. And in fact, if I, if I, if my memory serves correctly, they did a movie uh, about his book, Paper Tiger. I think it may have starred Alan Alda. I'm not sure, but it would have been probably around the late seventies, but a prolific writer and very interesting stories about his experience in training camp and, and playing for, uh, the Boston Bruins, or as I mentioned, the, I believe it was the Detroit Lions and so on. And also just as an aside, um, George Plimpton is the father of actress Martha Plimpton. Oh, I didn't know that. Perhaps some of you have heard of Martha Plimpton. Yes. Yeah. Wasn't she also in uh, that Quentin Tarantino movie, uh, Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction, I believe. I believe so. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not positive, but yeah. I think he was uh, from the Boston area, if memory serves as well. Uh, in this particular article, there's a great picture of the poet uh, Marianne Moore with Muhammad Ali, and they're at, uh, at Toots Shores. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar, familiar with Toots Shores, uh, it was a very, very famous uh, restaurant in New York City. It was frequented a lot by Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack. Oh. Uh, I believe in one of his songs, he even references uh, is he even references Toots. So uh, yeah, it's really what neat. What a cool reference! Yeah, it's, they it's, look like a very unlikely pair, the two of them, yeah. Muhammad Ali and Marianne Moore. Yeah, it's really neat. Yeah, but again, legends in their own right. So I think it's fabulous. Great find. Yeah, it really. And is. by the way, if you guys are interested in this article, this magazine, or any other of my magazines, you can find them in my eBay and Etsy stores. My seller name is Great Mags, G R number eight M A G Z, or. <laughs> The reason Stephanie's laughing is... is Morley's giving me the side eye. He's, he's going to ask me how to say it in Swahili in a second. Pretty much. How to spell great mags in Swahili or... Exactly. Or some other language. Well, it's that... usually, usually the last letter. So, for oh example, uh, we have some listeners in the Philippines. So, <laughs> for those of you who say Magadang Gabe or Magadang Umaga, uh, so which means uh, good morning or good evening or Magadang Hapon, which is afternoon. So... Uh, for those of you who are listening from the Philippines, uh, what is the last letter? Uh, what is the, the Z or Z equivalent in Tagola? Please let me know. I can be reached at uncovered underscore VFMR on Instagram. And we're also on Twitter. And that, of course, is at uncovered VFMR. And our email address, we love getting emails from our listeners, which is uncoveredpodcast at yahoo.com. Page 230 brings us to a layout entitled More Dash Than Cash, Knights in Black Satin. As opposed to Knights in... White Satin, okay. a song, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Knights in Black Satin, add a bit of brilliance. It's four pages, black and white. Unfortunately, I do not recognize the models. Photos are by Eric Bowman, hair by John Frieda, makeup again uncredited. I'll go ahead and read you the caption. The two-step, silky blouses and black satin trousers... Diamante glitter, glossy belts, and a slice of electric blue. 
long skirts and slips of dresses, high heels in black and gold. So they've gone ahead and told us what colors we're looking at because again, this is a black and white layout. Photos are all um, black and white. Clothing is party clothing, basically. Silk, satin, leather, suede are the fabrics that they're using. And the models are wearing knee length skirts or pants. And I'm noticing that they're belted with sort of a, sh a shiny bow. Yeah. So as a belt, they're, they're tying a belt. In, a, in sort of a bow. Yeah, very unusual. And I just wanted to bring your attention to one of the items that they named as a teddy bear coat. A teddy bear coat. Teddy bear coat. I just want to be your teddy and bear And of course, coat. we still wear teddy coats now. You do? There's, they're fake fur, sort of faux oh, fur, okay. but they're not fur. They're um. It almost looks like terry cloth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like a fluffy material, sort okay. of. And the teddy bear coat here, just for the sake of your interest, if you're interested, is... 39.99 pounds, and this is a 1978. It looks like that's how much it weighs. It's pretty yeah, heavy. Yeah, it is. It is. So it's a short little layout, but I would encourage you all to check it out. Um, check out the fashion of 1978, Knights in Black Satin, Add a Bit of Brilliance. And while you're at it, if you want to listen to the Moody Blues song, uh, you're welcome to. That's so. an amazing song. I wonder if it came out around that time. No, it's much older than 1978, right? Uh, correct. Right. Yeah, that was from the 60s, I believe. Yeah, I would think so. Yes. Um, also, I want to make a correction as well. Uh, in terms of stone, apparently one stone is equal to 6.35 kilograms. So 6.35 kilograms is approximately, I believe, 14 pounds. So it wasn't quite 20 pounds, but around 14 pounds. So either way, she... Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for that. Yeah. So that person still lost a heck of a lot of weight. Anyway, thanks for listening to this thanks, interesting uh, episode of Uncovered Vintage Fashion Magazine Review. We don't often get a chance to do British magazines. No, this is a very special episode for us. Yeah, we really enjoyed it. We hope you did too. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to Uncovered Vintage Fashion Magazine Review Podcast. Uncovered was produced by Morley Shulman, with music by David Renda, and logo design by Alan Lipman. So remember, if you liked Uncovered, be sure to tell two friends about it. And I'll tell two friends. And, and so, so on, on, and so on, and so on. And so on.